Hello. This video is about box sizing. Now you've heard about the box model in CSS in three previous videos where I went over margin, border, and padding. Those three CSS properties are certainly related to box sizing, but box sizing is an additional tool to put in your toolkit. Box sizing is a CSS property and it has two values that are commonly used, border box and content box. Content box is the default in every browser I know of. So what you're going to see first is the default, which is known as content box as a value for box sizing. So I've got an example page here that has three identical paragraphs. And in the HTML, you'll see that uh, within the body, I've got a plain paragraph at the top, has a blue background because it's not surrounded by anything. And then I have these three identical divs with identical contents. The only difference between any of these is that they have a different class on them. And within the CSS document, you'll see that the div overall has a margin of zero, a border of none, and a padding of zero, just to make sure everything is removed. All the box um, properties are not in effect. And so far, the rules for the class second and the class third are the same. And now let me rearrange uh, the screen so that you can see things easily. Okay. So the first thing I'm going to do is add padding on the second div, and that would be this one here. So padding, I'm going to use pixels again. Uh, 40 pixels, save and reload. So I actually need to pull this guy out a little more. So you've seen padding before. You know that padding occurs inside the element to which it is added. That should not surprise you. But what I want to call your attention to now is the fact that the box actually became wider. And these boxes, these divs, are not full width because I have put a fixed width on them, an absolute width in pixels of 500 pixels. That is not changed by anything I've done on the second div although it is by default because of this box sizing issue. So when I add borders or padding to an element, the element itself actually gets wider and taller, but it's the width that's probably going to mess you up when you try to do layout because you told a thing to be 500 pixels wide and now it's actually 580 pixels wide. And if you wanted to fit two 500 things side by side in a 1000 space, well now this would be too wide and the other thing would fall below and your layout would be destroyed. Border is the same way. So if I put in a border and reload, it became wider again. Now, you know that if I add margin, say I add margin on the side, just on the left, to so make this simple. Uh, say I put 40 pixels on the left side for the same element. You know that margin is on the outside, and you know that the bigger the margin would be, the farther the element would move toward the right when you're adding space on the left. You may not realize that if you put a negative margin on, this is a little extra, it would actually move off screen. You could do that. Not that you'd really want to, but it's another thing that can be done. I'm going to take off that left margin because that isn't usually your problem so much, although it does add to what you're doing with this element. So remember this element is a div with the class of second, and I have now added padding and border to it, and compared to the other two divs, which are otherwise identical. The only difference is that second has border and padding added, but it has now become wider. 
because of the default, which is content box. Okay, so now you're going to see the effect of box sizing. So I've got a commented out declaration here in the div with class a second. I'm going to remove the comment characters so that this comes into effect. So remember, the default is the value content box, but I'm changing that now for the second div. I'm changing it to border box. So I save my CSS. I reload my page. And now you've seen that by using border box, the width that I set on all divs applies to my second div, even though I have increased the padding and I have increased the border. When an element has the default content box, and I'll show you that with our third one down here, save and reload, the default makes the item get wider with every property you add to it. And I will take the comment off the box sizing uh, property here, just so you can see that the default, uh, that is the default. So I haven't changed anything by adding this. This is the default content box. But by adding box sizing, I have forced the div to stay the exact width that I wanted all the divs to be. Now this also applies if you use a percentage. So what if I said uh, 75%? So that means 75% of the width of the containing element, which in this case, what contains the div? It's the body. However wide the window is, these divs will be 75% of that width. So I save and I reload. And now if I increase the size of the browser window, all divs are always 75% of the width of this window. But you see that 75% has a different meaning in border box and in content box. So that's why this box sizing property is pretty important to understand. And the last thing you need to know about it is, well, how could I apply box sizing border box to everything on the page? So I don't have to keep wondering, should I add this to an element? Do I need to add this? Do I not need to add it? I'm going to take it off here. I'm going to take it off here. No box sizing anywhere in my CSS. And then I'm going to add it the way it is typically added for a complex page that may have many elements that need it. And what we do is we go up into the HTML element. And remember, HTML contains everything, even body. And we add box sizing in the HTML selector in the CSS. And then after that, we add a new rule, an additional rule, with the asterisk, which is called the universal selector. And within the rule for the universal selector, we say box sizing inherit. And that means that any item on the page is going to inherit from the root of the document. Then the root is the HTML element, which contains everything, the head, the body, everything. This pair of CSS rules is a very standard thing that you'll see in uh, professional CSS documents. Uh, if your document's very simple, you may add box sizing border box just to individual elements. It's up to you. And one other thing you may also see uh, this configuration, oops, forgot the asterisk, asterisk, and then the before pseudo element selector, and asterisk after, the after pseudo element selector, not pseudo class, but pseudo element. So this is also very common, but if you don't have any pseudo elements in your code, 
uh, I find that this is usually sufficient. And if I reload, then I see that all three divs are constrained to the measurement I picked. In this case, it's 75%. I could change that to uh, 600 pixels. Right, so then it's a fixed number of pixels. It doesn't change. And I could change the width of all divs on the page to some width in M's. And that is also a fixed width. So the width of the browser window would not affect that. But because of a border box, all divs would be the same width whether or not they had border and padding. So the thing to remember about border box is that it keeps the width that you expect when you have applied a width, whether it is a flexible width or a fixed width on elements. And the typical way to apply border box in modern CSS is with these rules at the very top of your CSS document. So that's everything we have for box sizing. It's quite important. And if you haven't already watched the video for units of measurement in CSS, you should do that now.